What's up folks, Crush SG here, back with the final part of my Noel DPS guide series. Today we'll be finally discussing the most frequently asked topic in my comment section. Weapons for a DPS Noel. Now I'll be taking a ground up approach to this part because Noel is the only Claymore user that all players, free to play or pay to play, are guaranteed to get right off the bat from the beginner's banner. Let's get the basics out of the way first. Percent attack is 100% the way to go in the early game if you want to main Noel from day one as an F2P player. You won't have C6 and you won't have anything close to having a decent burst uptime. So you need to ensure you're doing damage all the time, in or out of burst. You can consider heavily investing into defense later on in the mid or late end game if it suits your fancy. Okay, let's talk about weapon progression. In the early game, approximately AR1 to 15, you are looking at basically any 3-star Claymore that you can get your hands on via your free pulls. If you get the Debate Club, great. You are set all the way till you can craft something like the White Blind. If not, just use whatever 3-star Claymore you can get your hands on. Don't be afraid to level it up to 20. You can always feed it to the next weapon for XP and you only lose 10% of the total XP, which is really nothing at level 20. Next, we have the early to mid-game progression, approximately AR15 to AR25. As mentioned earlier, if you've got the debate club, you're pretty much set. Refine it with any additional copies you get from your free pulls. Continue using it for now. A very good 3-star alternative to consider at this point is the Skyrider Greatsword. It has a physical damage bonus as its secondary and it gives a stacking attack buff. Now fizz damage is fine in the early game because you won't be in burst all that often so your attacks will deal physical damage most of the time. You get one copy of this for free right here in Li Yue. Here's where I am on the map. It will be sitting on the ground right here just looted. Additional copies are drop only, meaning you can't gacha for it. You get them as a drop from any exquisite or higher chest and it's pretty easy to hit refine 5 if you devote some time into chest hunting. This is hands down the best in slot 3 star claymore for Razor specifically. But it will still last you well into the mid game on Noel. Feel free to invest in your debate club or Skyrider greatsword and get it to level 40. Now on to the mid to late game, approximately AR25 to 40. You could continue using your 3 star weapons and take them higher, but by now you'll have access to the better 4 star craftable weapons. As mentioned in part 1 of the series, most folks end up crafting the prototype Aminus simply because it can be used by all Claymore users, compared to the white blind which is only useful for Noel alone. Either way, whichever you end up picking is going to last you well into the late game, so feed your level 40 3-star weapon into this weapon and take it as high as you need to. Finally, we get to the late end game, AR40++. Now by this point, it will be pretty obvious whether you are free to play or pay to play. If you are free to play, your options are limited to RNG, so you'll have to stick with the white blind or the prototype Aminus the rest of the way or until you get one of the gacha options, assuming you want to switch, you may not necessarily feel the need to. But let's take a closer look at these two weapons first. The white blind has a percent defense as its secondary, and its bonus provides an unconditional stacking buff to both your attack and your defense. Its base attack is right smack in the middle of the range when it comes to claymores. In my opinion, while this is undoubtedly the best in slot weapon for any support Noel, it is debatable for a primary DPS Noel specifically, depending on your gear and your stats. Nonetheless, it is an excellent weapon and will last you easily well into the end game if you are free to play. The prototype Aminus, on the other hand, has percent attack as its secondary and a chance to deal a huge hit ever so often. Its base attack is also in the highest tier among the 4-star claymores. 
This is generally the Claymore most folks end up crafting because it can be used by all Claymore users very effectively and could arguably be the better choice for an F2P player because your weapon options are very limited. So choosing a weapon that can be used by anyone else may be more efficient. Now while it's less optimized than the white line is for Noel specifically, it's still a perfectly fine weapon that'll last you well into the end game. Just to be clear, because I know this could sound confusing to some, the TLDR is craft the Eminus if you are unsure about maining Noel in the long run and want the versatility of swapping to another Claymore user. Craft the White Blind if Noel is 100% your main waifu, till death do you part. If you made a mistake along the way, don't fret too much, both weapons are great. Now if you are paid to play on the other hand, let's talk about your options. Your number one pay to play option for a DPS Noel would undoubtedly be the Battle Pass reward, Serpent Spine. This is also the weapon I use most of the time on my Noel. The strength of this weapon lies in its secondary stat, crit rate. Having crit rate on your weapon pretty much guarantees you approximately 50% total crit rate with reasonably decent gear. And it frees up your headpiece for a DPS stat whether it's crit damage, percent attack, or percent defense. Its bonus also adds a stacking buff that gives you up to 30% bonus damage at rank 1 refine. That's a lot of damage. The downside of this buff is it makes you take up to 15% more damage and you lose a stack every time you take damage. Of course, Noelle's ability to shield herself helps with this mechanic a lot. Another annoying thing about this mechanic is that damage over time effects such as the dot from the pyro debuff or burning ground counts as one hit per tick of damage. This means standing on burning ground will completely wipe out all of the 5 stacks in a matter of seconds if you don't have a shield up, even though burning ground and the pyro debuff only do 9 damage per tick. Other than that, its base attack is similar to the white blind right in the middle of the 4-star pack. Now, there are only two claymores currently available that have crit rate based modifiers. One is the Serpent Spine and the other is the Royal Greatsword. Now, the Royal Greatsword was purchasable from the shop with 424-star glitter, but at the point of recording this video, the items have rotated out. So if you didn't purchase it already, this weapon can no longer be purchased, though I suspect it'll be, it'll be back in about 4 rotations or so. My best guess would be two months of the current items, maybe two months of the lithic weapons, and then it'll rotate back to the royal weapons. But this is 100% speculation, maybe a beta tester would know better than me. If you already purchased the royal greatsword, let's talk about it. Its secondary stat is percent attack, but its bonus provides a stacking crit rate buff that stacks up to five times, resetting every time you land a crit. This value is increased by 2% per refine level, maxing out at 16% crit rate per stack. Now this simple one-line description actually hides a buff mechanic that is extremely difficult to quantify for those like me who are not math inclined. As mentioned in part 1, I had a math professor friend of mine crunch the numbers for me and he found that anything above a refine 2 could give more crit rate on average versus my level 80 serpent spine. This is, however, entirely dependent on your base crit rate without the weapon. Naturally, the more crit you have, the less value this weapon provides. Nevertheless, I took the gamer approach, and after days of manual testing, I found that with my rather high base crit rate of 37%, it feels like Refine 3 is just about on par with my level 80 Serpent Spine in terms of crit rate. And I stress the word feels, as this is completely anecdotal on my part. So my conclusion is that the Royal Greatsword will be competitive at Refine 2 or above, and definitely worth using at Refine 4 or 5, unless you already have an ungodly amount of base crit without the weapon. In which case, you really shouldn't be looking at crit rate on the weapon anyway. Another thing to note is that this Claymore has a higher than normal base attack. And this works out to about 
anywhere between 40 to about 90 more base attack at level 80 compared to some of the other 4-star claymores. The only two other 4-star claymores that share this base attack would be the prototype Animus and the sacrificial greatsword. Now moving along, as mentioned, the shop has rotated and we now have a new set of weapons in the shop. And I'm sure some of you will be asking about the new Black Cliff Claymore, so I'll just give my quick judgement on it. It's not worth it. Crit damage as a secondary is very nice, but it has a very unreliable and somewhat mediocre bonus mechanic. 12% bonus attack for 30 seconds on kill. What makes this bonus unreliable is two phrases. One, after defeating an enemy. Two, independent duration. For starters, I feel that any bonus that requires killing mobs is too situational. 30 seconds, however, is, a, is long enough to make it useful. If new kills stacked and refreshed the duration. Unfortunately, it doesn't refresh meaning outside of open world content, it's going to be pretty tough to get the full value from this buff. On top of that, additional refines add a mere 3% to this amount. That's pretty low for the cost, in my opinion. To be clear, I'm not saying the Black Cliff is outright bad. It's certainly good if you have nothing else, but it's just not worth the price, in my opinion, strictly. I'd take the 5 to 15 wish pools or even the very important C1 for your Bennett, if you don't have it already. Or maybe just save your Star Glitter for future use. Now yes, I know some of you feel the Royal Greatsword is an unreliable bonus in itself, and may not be worth it to you. I stress again, this is personal opinion. The Royal Greatsword's bonus is unconditional, i.e. it requires no specific action, no input, and no scenario for it to apply. The Black Cliff's bonus, on the other hand, is nothing but conditional, with an extra serving of conditionality to boot. At the end of the day, Star Glitter is a rare commodity, the choice is yours to make. Okay, enough with the ifs and the buts. Let's talk about more ifs and buts. The rest of the options are all gacha options, so free-to-play players might have access to them with some luck. First, we have a Claymore that is currently one of the boosted items in the Gravestone Banner, the Sacrificial Greatsword. Its secondary is Energy Recharge and its bonus provides a chance to reset the cooldown of your shield on use. Energy Recharge, chance of resetting the shield, the benefits are self-explanatory here. As mentioned earlier, it also has one of the highest base attacks of all 4-star claymores, so it is a decent option to consider, especially if you use the Bolide set. Next we have what I think is the crowd favourite here, on my channel at least, the Favonius Greatsword. Now the strength of this weapon lies in its bonus, which recovers energy upon landing a crit. I tested this personally and can confirm that it definitely increases your burst uptime at Refine Rank 1, though it doesn't give me specifically a 100% uptime. This effect does increase every Refine Rank, so my guess is a Refine 3 would net me through 100%, which opens up the option of investing heavily and almost entirely into defense and crit stats for damage. 100% burst uptime? Sounds great. We have now attained Godhood. End of weapon deep dive, right? No, no, no. Let's talk about its downsides and limitations. First, it has the lowest base attack of all 4-star claymores. 41 base attack at level 1 translates to 48 less base attack at level 80 versus the White Brine or the Serpent Spine, and a whopping 96 less base attack than the prototype Eminus. That's almost a 4-star to 5-star weapon's worth of base attack value at level 80. Second, it lacks any raw damage related bonuses. Energy recharge as its secondary stat, energy recovery as its bonus mechanic, self-explanatory. And lastly, its usefulness is hard capped once you are able to achieve a 100% burst uptime. Meaning, if you hit 100% uptime at refine 2, more refines provide no more value and there is no further way to improve this weapon. That's the trade-off with this weapon, folks. Sacrificing raw damage for a 100% burst uptime. 
it's a toss-up at the end of the day because securing a 100% burst uptime is an extremely ideal scenario for Noel. However, after all the testing I've done, my conclusion for me specifically is that with the team compositions I generally run, factoring in my gear, my playstyle and preferences, I'm personally perfectly fine with the 70-80% to 80 uptime that I currently have and I'll just keep the raw damage gains from using something like the Serpent Spine. Now finally, we have the 5 star weapons, the Skyward Pride and the Wolf's Gravestone. Before we go on, I need to make an important correction to a statement I made recently in my damage calculation video regarding the Wolf's Gravestone. Because I don't have one, the source of my info was naturally the Genshin Wiki. And the Wiki still currently lists its bonus as 20% base attack with a 40% base attack bonus to the entire party. While making this video and browsing actual images and videos of the gravestone in-game, I realized that the correct bonus is actually just plain 20% attack and a 40% attack to the entire party, not base attack. While this doesn't change my conclusions about the weapon, and in fact makes it a tad worse than what I thought it was, it is still a mistake that needs to be corrected because I dislike misinformation in general. Okay, with that out of the way, let's take a look at these two weapons. First, we have the Skyward Pride. Its secondary gives a large amount of energy recharge, which is good for burst uptime. The first part of its bonus gives 8% damage. Now this sounds negligible, but it isn't. It, this 8% is multiplicative, so it is always worth noting. The second part of its bonus essentially causes 8 extra hits whenever you use your burst. One extra hit for each of the first 8 hits that you land during your burst, to be more specific. Each of these hits deals 80% of your sheet attack and also deals damage to all targets in a straight line in front of you. Next, we have the Wolf's Gravestone. Its secondary gives percent attack and the first part of its bonus gives plus 20% attack. The second part of its bonus gives a 40% attack to the party for 12 seconds if you hit a mob with less than 30% HP. And this can occur once every 30 seconds for 12 seconds. Okay, so now that we know what each weapon does, let me take the opportunity to TLDR the rest of this video for those who just want an answer. I get lots of questions about 5-star weapons in the comments of my videos, so I'll try to answer most of them at once. In general, both these weapons are great for any DPS Claymore user. They have significantly more base attack than 4-stars do and usually have better bonus mechanics. So naturally, refine ranks aside, they are proportionally and undoubtedly better than most of the 4-star claymores as anyone would expect. Between the two 5-stars, however, the Skyward Pride is generally the better choice for Noel because of how her skills scale her damage. Gravestone provides a lot of attack, which is useful but it only scales with her base attack. The Skyward Pride gives 8% multiplicative damage and its bonus deals damage based on Noel's total sheet attack which includes the bonus attack she gains from defense during her burst. One of the scenarios where Gravestone would be the better choice is if you build heavily into attack and don't have at least a C5 for Noel. Which should really be how you build Noel if you don't have C5 and want to run her as a primary DPS, in my opinion at least. That being said, because of how I built my Noel specifically, the Serpent Spine actually works out to be better than the Gravestone across any of the builds that I have right now, and actually equals the Skyward Pride if I built her specifically for crit. Otherwise, the Skyward Pride is the best overall weapon for Noel. Okay, that's the TLDR, folks. If that's what you were here for, feel free to move along. Thanks for watching my videos. For those of you who want to dig deep and know more, let's hop over to the spreadsheet. As you can see, I have three tables here. One for the Gravestone, one for the Skyward Pride, and one for the Serpent Spine. All are assumed to be level 80 and rank 1 refine. For ease of calculation, I made a couple of considerations. 
First, because of how the stacking buff works on the Serpent Spine, I'm counting it as only 15% bonus rather than the full 30%. This is because it is realistically impossible to have the full 30% damage buff up 100% of the time. A 50% uptime is probably more accurate, for me at least. Next, for the Gravestone, I considered a maximum uptime of the 40% party bonus, meaning 12 seconds every 30 seconds on cooldown. This averages to an attack gain of about 16% on average throughout the whole fight. Lastly, I have no team resonance in play for all these calculations. This is my Gladiator balanced stats build. By balanced stats build, I mean I attempt to balance a portion of attack with defense, not having 100% attack and not having 100% defense. Now, I don't own a gravestone, but I know the exact stats of a level 81 and have put them in in the same manner as the other two weapons. Okay, I'll spare you as much of the boring stuff as possible, but for those who care, we are calculating the average final damage dealt by a normal attack on a level 80 target, inclusive of critical hits, factoring in crit rate and mob mitigation. Mob default mitigation is an established fixed formula and is always 50% if it is the same level as your character. The orange cells indicate the bonuses specific to each weapon, the bonuses of the Serpent Spine and Gravestone are very straightforward and they fit into the calculation easily. The Skyward Pride's bonus, on the other hand, requires some creative mathing to quantify, and this is how I did it. I took the total damage dealt by all eight vacuum blades and averaged it across all hits throughout the duration of each burst. The average number of hits that I clock during each burst is 16 excluding the initial burst hit because it doesn't proc a blade anyway. Now this gives us the average bonus damage per hit. Yes, I am aware that this isn't a 100% accurate way of measuring it because there could be other factors at play, such as the burst extension from a C6 and stuff like that, but this is good enough for a decent baseline calculation. Now I could assume a 100% burst uptime for my Skyward Pride calculation, but I chose to use my Noel's average burst uptime of about 80% in the calculation. It's just because the way Skyward Pride works, it only works in burst. So I think it's important to get as accurate of a figure as I possibly can. Anyway, let's look at the results. We have 5.7k for the Serpent Spine, 5.2k for the Gravestone, and 6.2k for the Skyward Pride. As you can see, the Skyward Pride gives the highest average damage output, followed by the Serpent Spine, then the Gravestone. Surprised? I'm not. As I've replied to many of the comments in my channel asking about the Gravestone, while it is a good weapon and better than virtually any other 4-star Claymore, it is not optimized for how Noel's damage works. It brings only additive attack to the table, which scales off of base attack values, whereas the Skyward Pride brings 8% multiplicative damage and its bonus hits scale with total sheet attack. The Serpent Spine, on the other hand, brings crit rate and up to 30% multiplicative damage to the table, which is what makes it such a strong contender here. And yes, folks, of course I ran the numbers for the Favonius Greatsword and the White Blind too. Here you go. 5.6k, 5.1k, 4.2k. The Serpent Spine leads the pack of 4 stars with the White Blind coming in second with 8.7% less damage. Yes, this is even in a full defense build, giving White Blind its full buff and the Serpent Spine only half its buff. I gave the White Blind every advantage I could possibly give it, Defense heavy build, 100% burst uptime, access to more than decent gear. I've said it multiple times through this series, folks. The White Blind is an excellent weapon for Noel, but not for a primary DPS. Regardless of how you build her. If it takes hard math to prove it, there you have it. Oh, by the way, I mathed everything else too. Balanced Gladiator, Full Defense Gladiator, Full Crit Bolide, because that's the only workable Bolide set I have, and I got some pretty ridiculous rolls on it too. Let's have a look at it.
Sweet orange Jesus. It's like Kaching dressed up as Noel for Halloween. And lastly, never forgetting my sub C5 brethren. This is why building a tech is the way to go for a sub C5 Noel. Let's take a look. Full attack, full defense. Once again, 1800 attack, 2400 defense. There is absolutely no contest. Full attack is the way to go if you don't have a C, at least a C5 Noel. Okay, let's finally get down to wrapping things up. What we can conclude from this whole exercise is that the white blind is the absolute best in slot weapon for Noel for everything outside of a primary DPS, in which case the Serpent Spine takes the reins handily. The Favonius Greatsword is an excellent weapon if you're having problems with burst uptime and is the go-to slot filler, so to speak, till you can bridge the gap with better gear. The Skyward Pride is the better of the two 5 stars for Noel specifically, whereas the Gravestone would probably be best in slot for any other Claymore user. I know I want one for my Razor. But are the current 5 stars worth pulling for if you already have the Favonius Greatsword, the Serpent Spine or the White Blind? My opinion would be a hard no. Save your money for when better 5 stars are introduced. Alright folks, that's it for weapons and this brings me to the end of the Noel DPS Guide series. Good lord, this was a tough one to make. I hope you guys enjoyed the series and that it has helped you with running her as a primary DPS. I might do a general showcase of my Noel sometime in the future when I eventually clear 12.3 and I'll definitely be working on more videos for Genshin Impact in general. Maybe a Razor guide? I don't know, there are plenty of Razor guides out there and Razor is a pretty straightforward character to play. We'll see after I clear 12.3. For now, as always, thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, share my videos with your friends if you learned something and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care guys.